and maybe I'll pose this to Captain uh, Temple. I mean, we've got this budget coming up. We know in our region that the BC Salmon Restora uh, Rest the Restoration Fund and Innovation Fund um, has just not been adequate. Like we've had many applications go in, many been rejected. And, and these applications not only fund critical projects, but they actually help mobilize uh, volunteers uh, that we get uh, that can get them out on the, uh, uh, and doing the important work. Mr. Temple, can you talk about um, how what we need in terms of restoration alone? Because you've been doing that work. We've called the NDP's been calling for a five-fold increase of the BC Restoration Fund. Yes, thank you, Mr. Johns. And I, I think it's important to note that the enthusiasm and the willingness and the science is all there. Um, what is lacking is obviously the, the adequate funding to support the variety and the multitude of projects that we, that we all acknowledge need to be completed. The question is where that money comes from. <laughs> That's way above my pay grade. But I, I can say that, you know, first we need to focus on habitat restoration. Um, then invasive species control, and then potentially hatchery production, because augmentation will fail if the habitat is degraded. And we cannot ensure viability if that habitat is replete with invasive species. So it's a circle of restore the habitat, remove aquatic invasive species, and replenish via hatchery production if necessary, which it looks to be. And that, you know, this pathway is supported heavily by science and proven by a highly successful localized salmon recovery projects. It's just a question of, coming up with that additional pile of funding that we desperately need if we have any hope of meaningful recovery. Thank you, Mr. John. You're on mute, Gord. I believe, uh, Mr. Temple, um, that wild salmon could go the way of Atlantic cod if we don't take emergency quick action to invest in restoration. Can you talk specifically as well about some of the partnerships that are developed on the ground and the importance of those partnerships to strengthen uh, reacting to this crisis? Yes, thank you, Mr. Johns. I, I think it's important to recognize uh, the importance of First Nations traditional knowledge here. Um, as the original stewards of these lands, I think any partnership um, is set up for failure if we don't rely heavily on the guidance and information um, and traditional ecological knowledge of First Nations communities throughout the range of Pacific salmon. Uh, in conjunction with First Nations, we also need um, restoration organizations that have the technical knowledge um, that will complement the traditional ecological knowledge so that we can perform the type of large-scale industrial remediation projects that need to happen. You need science, obviously, for the myriad of reasons that, that um, you know, scientific study adds to the, the effectiveness of the collaboration. Uh, and then, you know, you need, you need community, local community support. And finally, you need government support because somebody has to pay for it. And largely, a lot of the work before the BC SRIF and the Coastal Restoration Fund came into existence was uh, a lot of that funding was generated from private individuals or within marine industries. Uh, since then, the province and the federal government has stepped in tremendously. Um, and I think that we're on the right path. However, I think we can all uh, agree on the fact that more is needed to reverse the obvious trend, which is decline, decline, decline. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Johns. Uh, we'll 